Hey guys, it's me, Chasey Poo, and today I am doing a Q&A video. Um, this is an Instagram Q&A video, not a Twitter one, and I have not looked at any of the questions yet, so we're going to do this together. Um, I usually do a Twitter Q&A, but I thought I'd, you know, um, mix it up a bit. Also, I love this tank top, and I just... I just realized that it's a Coachella like brand from H&M and I'm like, oh god, I'm a white girl. A racist cultural appropriation white girl. So I posted a thing and I got 332 comments. So I regret not looking at these before I started this video. This is gonna be really fun. All right, y'all got some weird fucking handles. I don't know how to pronounce. Dark underscore otaku 666. How was your day? Thank you for asking. I've been having a really, really bad week. So today I decided to just do me and work and make videos and stuff like that. So pretty much having a, an okay day right now. So thank you for asking. Amy Dixon 3 if you could move anywhere other than Vancouver, where would you move and why? I don't know, maybe Portland? Maybe somewhere on the West Coast, because West Coast is way more relaxed. And I'm talking more like doable, not like Europe or anything like that, but Somewhere that's more relaxed. Honestly, I don't want to think about moving other places than Vancouver. I have my heart set on moving to Vancouver, so let's just leave it at that, I guess. <laughs> Pete Wentz Enthusiast. <laughs> if, you, if you could have any number of cats, how many would you have? Really? How many? Depends on how, like I would love to like, li like work at a cat sanctuary where there's like thousands of cats that are all taken care of and it's not one of those Facebook videos where there's like, they like give food to cats and they're all like jumping on each other and everyone's like, oh that's so cute. That's not cute, hunty. They haven't eaten. They're hungry. They're hungry. Emil asks, why are you so cute? Mm, they, I don't know why because I have like hair on one shoulder and not the other and everyone always thinks that this is a bruise and it's not a bruise, it's just hair. Saxabone, how many limes are in your house? Unfortunately, none, but I will say that today is the three year anniversary where I asked my dad, why do you wish you were a lime? Because he wrote on Facebook, on, on Facebook, I wish I was a lime. So that's exciting, isn't it? No? Yeah? H. Jernifries, <laughs> how do you think your life would have been if you were born a cis man? How would it be different? I've had this conversation a lot with myself and with Aaron because I feel like I only grew up with my dad and my dad had a girlfriend and they had a son and I feel like I probably, I would have grown up way more sexual than I grew up even though I grew up like a very, I was a very sexual child as a kid and I feel like if I was born cis male I would have been even more than that. I think that I would be gay for sure and I would be super open and I would be super queer and I would probably I would probably have found the trans community and want to do work with the trans community. Not because it's fascinating, but because I love to help people and I don't think that that's something that I would have not learned as a cis man because my dad is such a sweetheart and my dad has taught me some great values to have and helping other people He's always helped other people. So for me, helping other people is like a core part of my identity, I guess. So I would have found a way back probably into the trans community somehow by helping people. Brave underscore Sprout. Are you still doing Chase Raw vlogs? I am currently not doing any vlogs because I am extremely depressed <laughs> and anxious and I'm not really doing anything with my life. Um, so vlogging about nothing would be nothing, um, but I am doing a lot of live streams on you now So I guess that could make up for it. Fucking Zuja. Okay, Zuja wrote, why do you hate Zuja so much? Okay, I see you. You just wanted me to say your name. Go follow Zuja on Instagram. Z-M-I-Z-E-T. -I, -E I know you guys are gonna- Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-
Finn underscore Chu, do you plan on getting any new cats soon? No, I do not, because the two that I have are a handful. Yes, I'm looking at you, children. Oh, Beauty is literally just sitting, like, she's just sitting right beside me, and Minu's on the bed. But no, I am not planning on, on um, getting any more cats, because both of these are rescue cats, and Beauty was a foster cat that I adopted, and Minu is from, a, like, a, a like a flea market. So I'm, I'm okay with the cats that I have, because I travel a lot, and it's really hard to, like, find people to watch these cats, so, yeah. This strange life of mine. How many peens make a lime? Ah, I wish I could, like, can I flip this? I'm gonna flip this for ya. You get to see my whole room. See, look, there's my peen wall. Don't flag this video! How many peens does it take? It takes that many peens. You just got, like, a whole view. That's my laundry, yeah! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go all the way random. Are you going to the trans conference? Yes, I am, and yes. Yes, I am. How much wood would a wood chuck chuck if a wood- really? <laughs> Okay, what do you find to be hardest part about being trans? I think the hardest part about being trans is having so much internalized hate for yourself that you maybe project it onto other people. And that's something that I struggled with a lot in the past and now I've realized that I have a lot of like internalized transphobia that I have inside me and I try to do things now that kind of reverse that, where I try to help more people and I try to really dig deep into myself and think to myself, like, no, I'm fine. It's okay that people transition and that you're allowed to transition and they let you transition. Who is they? I don't know. But my brain has all of these internalized thoughts of hatred towards myself as being trans that it's really hard to deal with. But it makes me feel like I'm transphobic. So that's, it's, it's not a fun place to be. Yoon Hitori, what is your favorite Lush product or products? Good question. I am obsessed with Lush. Sponsor me, literally. Sponsor me Lush. <laughs> um, I love their shampoo. I don't know what it's called in English, but in French it's like Danova, and it smells like bananas. It's like made of bananas. It smells so good and it doesn't like strip your hair of the hair dye which is really great. And then I, 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 I follow that up with a combination of the American Cream hair conditioner, which smells like a vanilla milkshake. So literally banana and vanilla milkshake in my hair is the best combination. I haven't found a body gel or body cream or body whatever thing that you wash your body with that I absolutely love and I only want that one for the rest of my life. I have not found that unfortunately, but I really like the prune one that just came out. That one's really good. Baby. Oh, she loves the limelight. <laughs> Feet um, Casper. Does your family still mess up and call you your birth name? How long did it take for them to use your preferred name? Oh, she is not happy. Um, so here's the thing, yes, they do mess up, and I've been on T for seven years now, and they still mess up my pronouns and it and my name. Um, my dad was getting a lot better, and they were getting really good, and then my dad got sick, and it was kind of like his memory kind of like went back. So he like started calling me my old name again, and then the pronouns, but now it's come to a, a place where like I look so masculine when we're in public. If you say she, people are gonna look around and be like, who are you talking to? And when we go to gatherings and they're like, don't you have another daughter? And I'm like standing right there. And my dad's like, no, just my son. So it's like very validating that my dad is now doing that. But it, it sucks that they still call me my old name. But it's a variation of my old name. It's a nickname that doesn't really sound like the old nickname and they're the only people in the world who are allowed to use that name and they know that because my aunt was being really rude and like using my old name and my stepmom came to my rescue and like was like no 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 you're not allowed to call him that and I was like damn hunty Jesus where'd you come from like she was like actually like I think that they're understanding like look this is my life this is my life. <laughs> I'm all over the internet because I'm trans, because I talk about my life, my experience, all of the things that I do are trans related to my research. And I love it. And I think that because I've embraced my identity so much, they're understanding more that this is who I am. Who is your celebrity hall pass? I don't know what that means, Zell Grassi, but if you want me to tell you what my what my what my celebrity crush is, I don't know what a hall pass is. So I'm just gonna say who I have a crush on, who is a celebrity, because I don't have many. I am obsessed with Jamie Lee Curtis. Okay, like I listen. I get it. She's old, but I can't. Watching Scream Queens, I'm like, oh, 
my god, like boner alert. I don't know how to explain it. She is just so beautiful and so funny and I'm just, I fiend for Jamie Lee Curtis. And I, whatever, you're seeing another side of Chase Ross right now. Wolf of Hope, what is your favorite song of all time? Well, my favorite song of all time is, is Level, is Avicii, is Levels by Avicii. No? Yeah, if you don't know it, you should look it up. It is literally my favorite song. I have another favorite song, but I don't want to share that on the internet because that's a more private thing that I want to share with just one other person. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like a, it's a private thing. But it's a really good song. Van Schifferik. I don't know, you guys with your names. What's your favorite memory? This is such, such a great question. And I... I have a lot of amazing memories with my dad and I can't pinpoint one of my favorite ones, but I used to have long hair and my dad used to put like, you know the firecrackers that have the stick? Well, he used to take the stick, not the firecracker, and he used to put it in my hair and like my hair would be like a sun. And I remember standing, like sitting on his shoulders and walking around the flea markets and working with him. And I just remember people looking at us and it was just such an amazing time because they loved my hair. And that's one of the memories that I love to cherish. But if I want to talk about like one of the best days of my life, I I haven't had it yet. I feel like the best day of my life I, I, I'm waiting for. And it's going to happen eventually. And there are days that come close. Um, me graduating from university was a very big thing that you know, no one in my family has ever even touched university, so that was really that was really intense for me, and I was really happy um, that that I graduated. So that's a good one. And then last summer, I went to Vancouver, and my friend Kai brought me backpacking, and like literally, it's the background of my phone. This is literally one of the happiest places. Like, I look at this picture, and I see the happiest chase I've ever seen. Um, because I am outside, I am in nature, I am away from technology. LOL, but the picture, a picture was taken. And I'm just, I feel like I'm just being me and I don't have to worry about anyone else and I just feel so peaceful and I have no anxiety other than dying because, you know, you're in the wilderness with your friend and there's nothing else that you can do if something bad happens. But I identified so much with the nature and that's a weird thing to say, but it made me, I don't know, that's one of the best days of my life that I just remember it just being just so good and being able to just relax. Like maybe not the best day of my life, but it's just like, it comes close to like, it's one of those good days. And I think another best day of my life, um, like I don't want to anticipate it because you don't want to jinx it. Like you can't make inside jokes unless they're inside jokes. You can't pre-make them. But um, I don't know when this video is going to come out. Okay. And I don't know if this have already happened yet, but I, I'm at a place where I am 8,000 away from my 100,000 subscriber goal. And you don't understand how much I've been looking forward to that. And it's been my goal all along. And the fact that it's so close and I can taste it, I feel like that is going to be one of the best days of my life because I'm, I'm feeling like it is the best day of my life right now because I'm thinking about it, you know? like. And it's not because it's a big number, it's just I feel like I put so much hard work into the education that I do and all the work that I do and it just so, it feels just great to be appreciated, I guess, and having that big number is just, it just, that's just, it's huge. And then you get your play button, oh my god, just, I feel like there's a lot of good things that are coming up. I've had a lot of bad things happen and I feel like the future is brighter. Like this light, like this light that's around me that's like blinding me. Snell Luminous, do you really wish you were a lime? No, because my dad says that my stepmom sucks on lime all day long. I don't want my stepmom sucking on me. YouTube trash. If you get phalloplasty where you close the hole, do you have to get a hysterectomy too, since there's a chance you might bleed again? Um, you have to get a hysterectomy before phalloplasty if you're having a trigger warning vaginectomy because um, you can't check those parts. There's no more hole to do any type of pap test or anything like that. And it's very dangerous because if you ended up getting ovarian cancer or anything like those are cancerous cells down there, you wouldn't know. So I think every single bottom surgeon that I know that performs phalloplasty that does a vaginectomy requires you to have a hysterectomy at least six months before you have phalloplasty. Smiling Sarah 14. Are you a lime or a sprout? I'm a bee. I'm a bee. Buzz, buzz, motherfucker. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bee. 
and like the sprout is 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 Aaron, and the lime is the podcast. It's basic math. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not kidding though, but for real, yes. Toby Wank, a newbie. What do you do to wake up and start your day? Well, I wake up at seven every single morning, even on the weekends. And I uh, go on my phone, I text some friends, and then I get up, feed the cats, I pee, I put my Andro gel on my shoulder, and then I go make my breakfast, I make a smoothie every morning, and then I either have a smoothie bowl, or I'll make uh, oatmeal, or I'll make a, um, I have some like waffles that are vegan, or I'll cut up some banana and some, some carrots, no, some, um, what is that called? An apple, and put peanut butter all over it, and then I sit down, and then I watch TV, and then after I get my day going. That's usually literally every single morning, that's what my morning is like. And I don't drink coffee really at all, like it's water and, and, and smoothies. <laughs> Would you ever do a meetup in Indiana? Oh, that's the same person. How did I end up with the same person? Anyways, I can't, do, I'm not going to Indiana unless your school organization wants me to come down and talk, but yes. Growing life, if you could only pick one hair color for the rest of your life, which would it be? It would probably be turquoise, ooh. And it wouldn't fade ever? And it would never fade, ooh. Or Mystic Heather, mmm. I don't know, Mystic Heather is like, everyone loves that one, it says, they, they, everyone always says my eyes pop, but I really like turquoise, the like atomic turquoise, ugh. I feel like that's my look though. But do I want like green blue hair for the rest of my life? Do I want purple? You know what, I'll go with turquoise because I feel like that's my signature look. Oh, can I, can it be like half my life is that color and then half my life is the other color? Okay, let's do that. Haley Diffie, what is your favorite part of yourself? Not physically, but like who you are as a person. I feel like I am a very giving person and I like to give back a lot and sometimes I give too much and that takes a lot out of me and then I need time to recuperate and that's okay and I'm okay with that like I don't complain about that at all and I think that giving a lot like volunteering and making like I give I, I give a lot of information I give a lot of myself out but I also like message companies to do giveaways and to do all of these things so I feel like I don't know, having a giving personality is probably my favorite thing about myself. But I also like that I'm funny, so... <laughs> and if I'm, if you don't think I'm funny, then unclick this video. I'm kidding, I'm like, this is so bright, damn. Basil Secu Secuel, can you get top surgery and not be on T? Yes. Liam Dot Chung, how do you take a picture of yourself every day and keep your face centered? I take like nine pictures a day to make sure that my face is actually centered. You'd think after seven years I'd actually be able to get it in, but nope. J underscore wolf seven, do you think there are only two genders? Nope, and we're not gonna get into that, but nope, that's that's my answer right there. Leo underscore Jacobson, would you ever consider metoidioplasty as an option for bottom surgery? No, I would not. <laughs> The reason being is because I already feel like I've had metoidioplasty. I don't want testicular implants, I don't want a vaginectomy, and I don't want urethra lengthening because there are too many complications as like with urethra lengthening. Um, so I already feel like the only difference would be that it, they would um, release the skin underneath and my wiener would pop out more, which is cool. But it's really uncomfortable when you're running, it's really uncomfortable when you're biking, and like I feel like my wiener is like hard a lot. So I, w I would always just have like an erect boner, so I would be more looking for phalloplasty in the future. That's a good question though. Leo underscore Jacobson, again, will you ever make a video with your boyfriend, girlfriend, partner? If I had one, <laughs> I am lonely as hell. <laughs> Queer trans boy, do you have a favorite podcast episode? I do, it's when we started talking about our queer identity and like embracing our trans identity. That is probably one of my favorite podcasts ever. And of course the conspiracy cast and spoop cast are really good, but I think that the one where we're like, how to embrace your trans identity, that's one of my favorite ones. That one Hufflepuff, do you think maybe you could to do a meetup when you're in Philly for THC? Oh, for the trans health conference, I was like, THC, like weed? My God, well I'm gonna have a table so people come to meet, uh, come to my table and like, I mean like I sell shirts and stuff, but that's usually where I have my meeting, I guess. Just another trans guy, do you ever have one night stands? Is that even possible for a trans guy, for trans people? Yes, it is possible. I have not had a one night stand. Yes, I mean, does it count if you're like talking to someone on Grindr and then they come over and they fuck you and then they leave? Does that count as a one night stand? Because if so, I've done a lot of those. <laughs> so it is possible, but if you mean like meeting in a bar and stuff like that, I can't do that. I have too much anxiety, but it is possible. I have friends who have done that. 
um, I feel like the world is a little more open and if you just kind of tell someone you, you like talk to them you meet them you're like hey by the way I'm trans like as long as you like make sure that like ev like the person is comfortable with what's gonna happen and also make sure that they know that you're a top or you're a bottom because I feel like ah, the cis always expect um, uh, trans guys to be bottoms and I'm like I know so many trans guys who are tops who like never bottom it's so, like just make sure if you're a top you tell them I'm a top anyways that's it that was a lot of questions actually I just looked at all these questions and these are amazing some of these are gonna make topics um, about so thank you so much for these questions this video is boring I'm sorry it's just a Q&A you have questions for me I have answers for you I think next time I'll do it again on Twitter though because it's easier because then I can actually screenshot the question and show you whereas on Instagram it's impossible to do that because I don't want to do that so too much work but it's easier on Twitter anyways I love you guys so much thank you so much for the questions and engaging with me and I love it I will have a Q&A um, a live Q&A on you now um, frequently so make sure that you subscribe to my channel to find out when I'm having a Q&A and I'll answer all of your questions and we can do that alright thank you so much for watching I love you so much bye mm -hmm.